Thank you, and hello, everyone. This is Ed Heyman, and I'm a product manager for Aptio. Today, I'm here to speak about the technology partnership between LeanIX and Aptio that will better deliver key data analytics for IT spending. This new partnership will enable enterprise architects to make data-driven investment decisions backed by visibility into total IT costs, complexity, and fit. As Andre stated earlier, we see this as a strategic fit that can help our customers be more successful. We know that business leaders seek to accelerate digital transformation, where IT plays an essential role in contributing to top-line growth and bottom-line profitability. Business leaders seek to accelerate digital transformation, where IT plays an essential role. This requires increased transparency into technology cost to most effectively deploy money and resources. And we strongly believe the combination of enterprise architecture and IT financial management disciplines adds value to both practices and is critical to thriving in today's competitive landscape. In this session, I will cover a few key points. A brief intro to who Aptio is and what we do, what problem we are jointly trying to solve and how we do that, and finally, a short demo of how Aptio provides transparency into application and service costing that enables business enterprise architects to work with other stakeholders across the company to prioritize technology modernization and rationalization initiatives. At the end of my session, we will play a video that shows the new LeanIX Aptio integration in practice. So who is Aptio? Well, we are the undisputed IT financial management and technology business management market leader. Aptio's SaaS solutions help organizations make smart decisions as they analyze, plan, optimize, control, and collaborate about the investments that will help drive their digital transformations. Companies across all geographies and all sizes use Aptio, including 60% of the Fortune 100. Aptio has over 1,000 employees dedicated to serving our customers across the globe. So what does Aptio do? Well, Aptio is a technology business management platform and a set of applications that works with your existing financial and technology solutions. We ingest, aggregate, normalize data from financial systems, cloud service providers, project and product planning solutions, and IT operational systems, including LeanIX. We use this information to categorize and allocate costs into a standard taxonomy, and our cost model then translates costs from a financial view such as hardware, labor, managed services, to more of an IT view, think about compute, storage, applications, and ultimately to the business view, such as the technology products and services that enable your business capabilities. This allows technology leaders to better communicate the cost and value that they deliver to their stakeholders. With the addition of enterprise architecture data from LeanIX, Aptio leverages EA data such as business criticality, business fit, and technical efficiency to better drive application rationalization and cloud migration decisions. So what is the problem? Well, today, every company is a software company, and CIOs cite growth as their primary goal followed by IT-related initiatives. Top-performing CIOs understand that growth and technology are symbiotic and that technology will enable them to boost revenue and improve margins and customer satisfaction. That is why top CIOs have transformed their IT operating model and are mastering product-centric delivery by using cloud services and agile methodologies. We see enterprise architects as playing a key role in that transformation. Enterprise architects are the ones best positioned to understand the business architecture, information architecture, application architecture, and technology architecture to then map out what changes should be made to the portfolio and how to most effectively drive these transformations. However, change cannot be made for change's sake, and the understanding of cost and the impact of the business value is imperative to making sound decisions and getting the buy-in and support from business stakeholders. After all, money is the language of business. Yet today, most organizations, including enterprise architects, are challenged with determining accurate application and service costs to support their technology decision process. This is why Aptio and LeanIX have come together with our technology partnership to solve this problem. 
Aptio brings cost and financial risk information to the table, and LeanIX brings the business and technical fit information. The result is that together, we can help identify the expected financial impact of changes that can be incorporated into prioritized recommendations that are detailed, defensible, and dependable. So going one layer deeper, the benefit is delivered by these capabilities. First, the automated exchange of data with the new out-of-the-box integration between LeanIX and Aptio. The Aptio cost model, which provides best practices and key data structures for cost allocations, mapping, and allocations. And LeanIX is a source of truth for IT-related data that is consumed by this cost model. And then finally, one of the big issues of missing or inaccurate data is remedied through the distributed maintenance of data and relationship in LeanIX's easy-to-use user interface. So we see a joint value to the enterprise architects, and I'm gonna illustrate this by walking through two common use cases. The first is application rationalization and project planning. Today, you might ask which business units are consuming which applications and which of those applications are poor fit for the business? The better question is where do we have multiple applications providing the same business capability that we could rationalize based on technology fit and cost? Here, you want to perform trade-off analysis to determine the time model based on best fit and highest cost savings. Second use case is something more around end-of-life software version upgrade planning or new technology standard adoption planning. Today, you might ask the question, which dependencies are preventing a faster sunset of legacy software technology? The better question is what would be the impact to our run costs if we sunset the legacy software technology and replace it with new technologies? Now, you can surface technology dependencies and relationships that have the highest cost ramification. So Aptio's cost transparency application can support application rationalization efforts to quickly identify areas of focus. For this demo, I will be using our CT application and services product that enables you to classify your application with aggregated views to quickly identify areas of focus. We can then leverage the higher level business capabilities from Lean IX as, OMAI, as one method to provide the categorization and mapping. So let's get started. Starting off in the application review report, you see the spend associated with application run and application development across the portfolio. This provides two different areas to focus. You can reduce your application run costs and you could put on hold and redeploy resources from non-critical projects. The top applications list shows you the largest and most expensive applications. If your company is looking to cut costs during financially challenging times like today, you should focus on reducing the application run costs on these applications in the near term, since the top 10 to 20 applications typically account for 80% of the portfolio spend. In our details tab, we are able to see more specific information of the application, such as business owner and application investment objectives using the time classification. This is an example of how LeanIX can add value by providing important non-cost information about the applications in the portfolio. One key enhancement in our latest release is the introduction of addressable spend categories. Addressable spend identifies those costs that have an impact on the IT cost structure and the availability of IT resources and assets. Addressable costs are classified as direct savings, delayed savings, and cost avoidance. Non-addressable spend, on the other hand, includes costs that are not affected if the application is eliminated or reduced. Moving over to the help, we can see more specific definitions for these categories directly in our product. So let's take a closer look at the definitions of these key concepts, and in particular, the addressable spend categories. Direct savings include those costs that impact the current fiscal year. And examples could include external contractors or public cloud services that are used on an as-demand or as-needed basis. Delayed savings 
would include those costs that will be realized in future years. And typical examples here are where you have commitments such as enterprise software licensing that may expire in 18 or 24 months. And then cost avoidance includes those cost of resources that can be freed up and repurposed for use in other areas. Examples may include on-premise infrastructure or internal employees that can be reallocated to other applications or systems. Going back to the application details, we are able to see across the potential addressable spend for these applications. Some may have more addressable spend or less depending upon the fixed cost structure of each individual application. This is one of the benefits of public cloud as it moves away from fixed on-prem infrastructure towards the last, more elastic on-demand services. Having this high-level addressable cost breakout information about your applications is helpful. However, the real power is in your ability to drill in to see the underlying data. So let's look at the most expensive application, Oracle CRM. Drilling into the details, you can see there's a potential of, 100, of over $100,000 in direct savings for this application. In this summary view, you can see that it's all within the application development category, and you can see that these costs trend over the past several months. You have the ability to look at the specific cost drivers, such as vendors, contracts, labor, or project labor, to better understand where these opportunities are. Looking at the vendor detail, you can see two consulting firms supporting the Oracle CRM application. One appears to be focused on app dev and the other on app support. And you can see the vendor manager who are responsible for these relationships. You could also pull up additional information regarding the location and vendor type, whether it was a strategic relationship or more of a transactional vendor relationship. Looking at project labor, you can see that the external labor resources are supporting the CRM migration and decommissioning project, along with the specific roles and work location. This is information that can help you make decisions going mm. forward. Now, returning back to the details, in a similar fashion, we can see the underlying information for the uh, delayed savings category. As I drill into delayed savings, we see opportunities around business software and the software contracts category. And these specific categories are configurable and can be set by our customers to meet their specific reporting needs. Looking at the contracts detail, you can see one for Oracle manufacturing software, one for Oracle CRM software. These are costs that are allocated to the application. If you eliminate this application, you can expect cost savings starting at the end of the contract. Had these expiration dates been in the current fiscal year, they could be classified as direct savings. Now let's look at the costs that are related to existing resources where we may not see any hard savings. There are a few opportunities for future cost avoidance. The spend review summary shows items including infrastructure services and software contracts. Moving over to the contracts detail, you can see the cost avoidance for Oracle database management software, enterprise licensing support and maintenance. This database software is an example of something that is used by multiple business applications and won't go away with the elimination of this CRM application. You could reallocate these licenses for other use. Finally, looking at the labor detail, you can see several internal employees who are involved with the application development and support. These resources could be reassigned and available to support other application efforts. So just as we walk through a potential cost-saving impact for a single application, we can move to our aggregated addressable cost report. Here, we provide a holistic view over the entire application portfolio. You can analyze the addressable cost across the subportfolio, and then you can drill into the underlying details. If you look closely, sales and marketing has the largest overall spend with delivery applications being second. If you're trying to reduce cost and complexity, then analyzing the sales and marketing domain of applications would be the first place to focus. If I drill into the sales and marketing capabilities, you can see each of the applications in this category, along with the potential addressable cost saving opportunities that could affect the budget in the near term or longer term.
and then moving over to the addressable view, we can see across the list of sales and marketing applications where there are specific opportunities such as application development, business software, infrastructure services, or specific hardware or software contracts. To wrap up, let me show you how you could quickly prioritize one EA common use case. In this scenario, imagine you want to focus efforts on decommissioning the applications that have been targeted for elimination as part of your future state architecture. Looking at the application list, you will see all the applications in the portfolio, and of course you can filter for a sub-portfolio. In this example, let's filter for those applications that have been identified as eliminate. Again, this is data that could be fed into Aptio from the Lean IX data integration. Here we can see the list of these applications and the potential addressable cost. Clearly, you would want to focus on the top two applications that have the highest spend. So in summary, Aptio's cost transparency application with robust costing of applications and services, along with the enterprise architecture data from Lean IX, allows you to identify actionable and specific insights into the types of cost savings that can be achieved through application rationalization and modernization. Our joint goal is to help enterprise architects make data-driven investment decisions backed by visibility into total IT cost, complexity, and fit, which will have the greatest impact on the business. Thank you for your time. It has been a pleasure to talk to you about the technical partnership between Lean IX and Aptio. And as a reminder, we will now cut to a video that shows the new Lean IX Aptio integration in practice. In the administration section, under Integration API, you will find the Aptio Outbound Connector Type. This is used to create an export of the data that has been selected to be transferred to Aptio via an outbound processor. Switching to Integrations, you find the newly introduced Aptio integration and are now able to configure it. Switching to Aptio, you can see that the data has been added to the tables in the TBM Studio section and is now ready to be used for calculations. All tables follow a naming convention and start with LX so that they are easy to find. Tables have been created for all relevant fact sheet types, their hierarchical relations, and relations between fact sheet types. Starting on the Aptio Cost Transparency Dashboard for Applications, you can switch to the LeanIX Enhanced App Review Dashboard. Here, you see application costs displayed by technical and functional suitability, and can also get a deeper look on application spend, either by functional or technical suitability, and as seen over time. For example, take note of the decreasing amount of application spend for items with an inappropriate technical fit. Now, switching to the GDPR tab, you'll realize that only 17% of the applications are GDPR compliant. So, you might want to prioritize ensuring those compliance policies.